Peace and love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, a.k.a. King Woke, a.k.o. a.k.a. International Ifa Tunde, a.k.a. the most requested black scholar in the world, a.k.a. the greatest black school psychologist of all time, a.k.a. I'm on the Mount Rushmore of Pan-Africanism. I am here. Los Angeles, I am here. Long Beach, I am here. My first time in Long Beach since I keynoted the 2015 and 2017 Black Consciousness Conference at California State University Long Beach campus that was 2015, 2017. 2015 was the largest crowd that the Black Consciousness Conference had ever drawn. And I don't know if we broke that record in 2017. We might have. That's what I do. I break records. So I'm back, Long Beach. It's been three long years, but it's going down tomorrow. If you are a black parent in the state of California, if you are a black parent in the state of California who does not know your psychological rights to your child, your educational rights to your child, I strongly recommend that you go to my website right now, drumarjohnson.com, and you register for tomorrow's California State black parent know your school rights training boot camp we're getting started at 9 a.m. and we are going all the way until 9 p.m. if you have to leave early that's on your own accord but I am committed to properly educating all black parents in California who show up tomorrow I don't get a chance to get out here that often so I'm going to give it 125 cent tomorrow. We will be at 516 West Esther Street in Long Beach. 516 West Esther Street in Long Beach, California from 9 until 9. Children are free, but I do not recommend them because 12 hours is a long time to try to keep a child settled. But if you have to bring the babies single mom, single dad, or married mom and dad because you just don't trust folks with your children, feel free to bring them. Everybody who shows up will get a training packet, and we're going through special ed, IEP, disabilities, due process, 504, components of the IEP, change of place and manifestation, determination, discipline, extended school year. We're going to hit about 30 different topics Oakland this is your only chance San Francisco this is your only chance Sacramento this is your only chance Compton this is your only chance South Central Watts this is your only chance San Diego this is your only chance wherever you are in the state of California Tomorrow is your one time only training. I will not be doing this tour again. I will not be doing this tour again. Next year, we will have the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I will not be doing this tour again. Tomorrow is your chance. Seattle, come on down. Portland, come on down. Phoenix, Arizona, come on up. This is your chance. You don't have to live in California, but it is for California parents, drumarjohnson.com is where you register. And then on Sunday, and then on Sunday, and then on Sunday, the Prince of Pan-Africanism returns for his first Los Angeles lecture in four long years. The last time I was in LA was 2016. It's been four long years, LA. I'm going to see everybody over at Blessed Love. I'm going to see everybody over at Blessed Love on Sunday, 
Doors open up at 3 o'clock. King Kong Consciousness takes the stage at 4 o'clock. The address, 1404 Vernon Ave. 1404 Vernon Avenue. Blessed Love. You know, every time I come to Blessed Love, it's a classic. Every time I come to Blessed Love, it's a classic. So make sure y'all at Blessed Love on Sunday, 4 o'clock. Doors at 3 for the state of the race. We talking about everything. We, this is my first visit to California since we purchased the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. We got a lot to talk about. I was going to try to go to the Lakes Bucks game tonight. I was going to try to go to the Lakers Bucks game tonight. I was going to try to go to the Lakers Bucks game tonight. But I'm going to just stay in the rest. I'm going to stay in and rest tonight. Might get a nice back massage from one of the hotel queens. But that's about it for the night. Might go out to the Ethiopian restaurant real quick. Okay? But I think I'm going to chill. I think I'm going to chill. Okay? Long Beach tomorrow, L.A. on Sunday. Next stop, Oklahoma City Black Parent Training on March the 21st. And then Greensboro, North Carolina on March the 28th. If you live in North Carolina and South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, your training will be in Greensboro. We're moving from Charlotte to Greensboro. We're moving from Charlotte to Greensboro. We're moving from Charlotte to Greensboro. We will be at my good brother Malik's place, the Nkrumah Center in Greensboro. The Nkrumah Center in Greensboro, North Carolina on Saturday, March the 28th. That will be for the Virginias and the Carolinas. That will be for the Virginias and the Carolinas. Donate FDMG, dollar sign at block party. Bring me some, uh, bring me some, uh, some Jerry's uh, strawberry shortcake uh, ice cream. The Ben and Jerry's strawberry shortcake ice cream. That's not my favorite though. My favorite is the Hagen Dazs pineapple coconut. So the next person I block can bring the Hagen Dazs pineapple coconut. All right. So we got. Long Beach tomorrow, Oklahoma City on the 21st, Greensboro, North Carolina the 28th. Go to drumarjohnson.com. Remember, you can register at the door, but you are only guaranteed a training packet if you can register at the door, but you're only guaranteed a training packet if you register online. I'm going to go ahead and take a few tap-ins. I'm going to get something to eat. I'm going to sleep. I didn't order the back rub. That's on its way. Tap in if you have a question. This is your tap in time. I'm going to do about five tap ins. It's five o'clock LA time. The house that Kobe built. Aquarius black man going once. Aquarius black man going twice. Peace and love, black man. Hey, Dr. Johnson, how you doing, sir? All is well. Where you at in the world, beloved? I'm in, I'm in Atlanta, GA. I met you when you came down here to Atlanta June last year. I was a real tall brother. You, you called me, um, I forgot what you called. He called me the, the dude that played for the Lakers. What's his name? Uh, 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 I remember you. I remember you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> State night with the Lakers. Yeah, you called me him yeah, when I came down, man. I, I really, yes, I really appreciate that visit with you. What's on your mind today, brother? Uh, you know, well, real quick, first off, you in Long Beach. That's my hometown. That's where I'm from. Oh, Long man, you from Long Beach. Long Beach Poly High School, class of 98. You still got people out here? Oh, I got mad people out there. Man, Let them know about tomorrow, like... brother. Let them know about the black parent training. And if sure you need to, a... have them text my cell, and I'll send them the flyer. Yes, sir. I'll make sure I put it on on, on my Facebook post. 
you can write where you going to tomorrow. That's my neck of the woods. So um, oh, like I said, been my whole fall, life. Fall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I know you're on limited time. I, you know, I want to be respectful of your time. I know you got to get some rest. But a few things. Uh, first thing is, um, you know, a lot of these folks coming at you and, you know, kind of coming at you left because of the things you're trying to do. I'm not really surprised myself. You know, I think that in order for us to make progress with as as a, as a people, a few people are gonna gonna get knocked off. It's gonna be a few people that are gonna fall by the wayside, that are not gonna make it there with us. And um, you know, a lot of black people are. I feel like we're afraid of uh, progress. We're afraid yes, of success. Yes, I really sir. think that you know, when somebody, because like I don't know if I told you uh, when last year I said, that, you know, you're you're my Malcolm. You're my MLK. You're my mega ever. Yes, you know, I, I read about that. the brothers. My mom was a part. Of, no, you're very welcome. My mom was part of that movement back, you know, back oh, in wow, the fifties wow. and sixties. But for my, I was born 1980. Yeah, I was born 1980. I just turned 40. You're the Strong. only person that has spoken out like them because you're not a celebrity. You're to me, like I said, you're a doctor. You're an activist. You're not a celebrity. And so, yes, you know, I really appreciate that. You're brave. You're, you speak on things that a lot of other, a lot of other black leaders today, you know, no offense per se, but like the Al Sharptons, the Louis Farrakhan's, to me, they have a celebrity status. You don't have a celebrity status. Mm -hmm. So that's yes, why sir. I feel that you're a little bit different from them because you're not going to be censored where they, to me, have, they can say certain things, but it can only go as far. Yes, sir. You know, so I really, I really appreciate, I really want to just kind of say that is that, you know, I, I really, I really appreciate your honesty. And then one more thing I want to kind of you know to kind of discuss on um, you know with the Gail Kim, the, not Gail Kim the Gail King situation with Kobe and all that good stuff there. Yeah, I really feel, in my personal opinion, is that you know a lot of the brothers, including yourself, I'm not sure if you spoke out on it, but a lot of the famous black men came out and they spoke their mind about that situation. And me personally, I really didn't care what uh, famous black men had to say because I knew what they were thinking. I know. Right. More, more, right. more times than most, what right. black men are thinking. I wanted to hear. Like a Serena Williams or, you know, somewhere, you know, somebody in that caliber. I wanted to hear somebody, a black woman who is famous, who has power to speak out against those. Those yes. a lot of questioning that Gail did towards yeah. Lisa Leslie. Yeah. I didn't hear a peep. I heard a lot of sisters on social media, regular civilians, you know, women that, you know, we see, me and you see every single day. But I didn't see those sisters, you know, in the industry that are worth over $10 million. You know, the Cardi B's. Cardi yeah. B, no disrespect to Cardi B. <laughs> Cardi B is very vocal and very out there when it comes to her thoughts and opinions about things. I didn't hear a quote from her. Vivica Fox, Serena, Halle Berry. These are all women that come out and speak out when a when a black man is being accused of sexual assault or doing yes. anything of that nature. Yes. They speak on it. They have blogs. They have all types of things. But when a, when when it's a sister doing something that she has no business doing or saying, such as you know uh, Oprah coming out with these different documentaries, if these men are guilty or not, you know, what I'm saying that's that's a whole other discussion. But I don't see these sisters coming out speaking out against the Harvey Weinstein's and speaking out against these others, that's kind of like what I wanted to maybe, if you want to, you know, talk about that, is why do you think a lot of these famous sisters who have power, who have clout, who have shot calling abilities, why are they so quiet when defending black men in public in a situation like with Kobe, what Gail had said when she was out of line? Why didn't nobody come forward with a video or say something in an interview? I think that it speaks to an issue that we have in the black community in general, and that is the code of silence around people in our peer group who do wrong. In other words, don't snitch when somebody murders somebody in the black community. Right. Right? And then right. you also have, with the women, you have the feminist front, right? We all black women, so we got to stick together even when one of us does something wrong. Right. And to be honest with you, I stick with the brothers. But guess what? If a brother does something wrong, I have no problem publicly saying something, not condemning him, but I can constructively criticize. I'm not one of those people 
who believe that you stick with the group even when they do wrong. I'm not into that, but a lot of black people are into that, brother. And I think that's one of the reasons why yeah, you don't yeah. see a lot of black people join organizations because we've seen wrong happen and nobody speak out against it. We don't practice justice. Right. Black people do not practice justice. We practice tribalism. Loyalty to the clique. Right. Yeah, I, I highly agree. I highly agree. You know, it's, you know, I just, like I said, again, you know, I love my black women me being from the West Coast and I've been down here in the South now 19 years. You know, me and a, a friend of mine, we love, we, we love our sisters. I have nothing against my sisters. It's just, again, right. I just feel that, you know, when it comes to industry black women, you know, platforms like the Breakfast Club, um, yeah. like CNN, you know, all these different types of uh, platforms, I feel that there's a muzzle that is put on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speak oh, yeah. out oh, yeah. to defend the black man because I feel like if a black man pulls his pants up, respects women, you know, uh, you know, takes care of his, his mind, body, and soul, I feel like, you know, we are an absolute danger to society if a black man is getting the respect from a black woman. Because if a yes. man is doing what he's supposed to do, what other excuse does a black woman have not to be with a black man if we're doing what we're supposed to do as consistently as possible? And I honestly feel that, you know, um, white America and also some of our own, we're afraid of that. You know, we're, we're yes. honestly afraid of that. And it's just like, I don't, I don't, I really don't get it. Uh, can I mention one more thing, brother? And then I sure, get sure, sure, sure. One last thing. What do you feel about a lot of sisters who, I, I know how you personally feel about brothers, you know, dating, um, dating white women, you know, and this and the third. And uh, I want to know in reverse, what do you feel about a lot of our sisters now dating white men? Do you think it's out of true, genuine, genuine love, or do you think it's out of retaliation because of what we black men have done for so many years, you know, against them? How, how do you feel about the Serenas and the Eves and all and such dating white men? Well, for the celebrity sisters, I think it very much has to do with the desire to be valued by the white man the same way the white woman is. So it is, it is part of that right. wanting to be white. Right. Um, but with all black women, just like with black men, I hold them to the same standard. So I don't give black women a pass because she's a female. They should not be dating out the race any more than we should. Okay, so I hold them to the same standard. Although I would admit that when a sister does it, although it's for the same reason, she could make a stronger argument that I couldn't find a good enough of a black man. Or I couldn't find an available black man. I mean, let me not say good enough, because all of us are good enough. But the, it's slim picking. It's six persistence, it's slim picking. Only one out of every four black women gets married. But then I would counter that. I would counter that argument and say, even though it's slim picking, even though there's not a lot of able-bodied heterosexual black males, you could still go to Africa and get your husband. You could still go to the Caribbean and get your husband. You could still go to Central South America, go to Brazil, get your husband, go to Canada, go to the UK. So for me, Although the black woman has it harder than the black man when it comes to suitable choices for a mate, I still can accept the excuse because you can look beyond the borders of the United States if you feel that this country doesn't have the type of black man that you're looking for. Exactly. You know, and, I, and like I said before, you know, I, me personally, being brutally honest with you, I feel like, you know, love is love. Um, me personally, I'm for, you know, dating my sisters. Me personally, you know, I'm not going to knock somebody who does it. For me, I personally feel like if you guys are in the, if, if, if two people at Walmart and they're in the cereal aisle and then reach for the same box of cereal with that other individual and you're white and you guys 
each other. I was right, whatever. And say, you know what? F my sister, you know, F a black woman, F a black man. And you're purposely pushing yourself upon the white race, you know, for acceptance, for acceptance or to be in a relationship or marriage. That's why I have a problem. Because it's like you, you wear a size 10 shoe, but you're forcing yourself into an eight and a half because you want the damn shoe so bad. You know, it's the only, it's the only shoe left in the entire store. So I'm going to get this shoe. I'm going to force my foot into it, even though it doesn't fit. And I feel like a lot of, you know, black men and black women, we purposely try to hook up with another. I think, uh, lost my brother due to the reception but i'm gonna say this and i apologize that we lost the brother the reception is a little weak here interracial dating and marriage has very little to do with romance interracial dating and marriage has very little to do with love it has very little to do with love it largely centers around a need for acceptance from one oppressor. It largely centers around a need for acceptance and validation from one's oppressor as a way to add value to oneself. Okay, no black person married to a non-African is going to convince me that that union grew out of love and romance. It did not. It grew out of psychological deficiencies and emotional insecurities related to white power and black oppression. I'm going to say it again. Any black person who comes to me talking about I married outside of my race because of love and romance, I'm going to reject you. You did not marry outside of your race for love and romance. You marry outside of your race because you have a deep-seated insecurity which craves validation from your oppressor and it craves a form of self-recognition that can only come from you being accepted by somebody who doesn't look like you. It is born of low self-esteem it is born from racial rejection. It is born from a need to be validated by your oppressor. Absolutely no excuses. Cash Money 704, going once. Cash Money 704, going hey. twice. Hey, I just want to talk to you because if you at, Queen, where you at first minutes, off? Where you at? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. You, I'm gonna be in Greensboro for the Black Parent Training on March the 28th. You need to come on over to Greensboro, Queen. That's what's up. I need to talk to you okay, because I've been sending you a lot of messages regarding my black son, my okay. black kid. Here he is. Look, he been nosy. He don't think that All you're right. on live. Peace love, <laughs> don't be running. Don't be running. How he doing in school? He don't run. Away. I was looking at you last week when you uh, poured the water on the razor and they were using New York. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pouring the libations to the ancestors. You better be doing good yeah. in school, boy. Don't make me come get you. <laughs> All right. Yes, and that's what we've been having a conversation about because I always speak to him about black history. You know, he knows everything that he should do and everything with the law. But what really bothered me was the Nathaniel Woods case. That hurt yes, my heart too. too. That killed me. It, it killed me because I'm like, life. at the end of the day, yes, but no reason. For no and so reason. my whole thing is, this is how I started educating my son, and it could be wrong, so that's why I reached out to you. Because I looked at all the past events, and when it boils down to a black man, and when he has the court-appointed attorneys that's trying to help and save him, they always steer them, well, I'm saying not steer them wrong. So let me start over. When they tell them, okay, we know that you're innocent and we're going to fight for you and we're going to make this right, they do that, but they still lose. And when they lose, like, 
cases like Corey with the exonerated five, cases like Nathaniel, they was told to say, okay, I am innocent. You could have pled guilty and did five years and, you know, good behavior, parole, get out in two. But guess what? That didn't happen. They end up being 16 years in jail, execution style. I even looked at the, um, what is it, the Just Mercy movie? It's yeah. driving me crazy. So the way I have asked my son, I say, you know what, something, if this ever happened to you, and I pray that it doesn't, I want you to have to just go ahead and plead that guilty moment. And because yeah. if you got five years versus 15, yeah. you can fight this case and life. fight your innocence after you Yeah. So my thing is, like, what, you, what is your opinion on? Like, what would you advise your black child to do in a situation where you know that he's innocent and every the case proves and it's written out that he's innocent? Would you advise him to go ahead and just plead that guilty and we fight it and try to suit afterwards versus him being in a situation where he's going to do 16 years and then, you know, have to do life or get well, executed? As a parent, I would probably be of the same opinion as you, which is right. in the interest of saving your life, take the guilty plea. So at least we know you're not going to lose your life. But at the same right. time, if you look at it from the perspective of the victim, meaning the brother mm -hmm. who's falsely accused, right. can, even though he saves his physical life, his meaningful mm -hmm. life has been taken from him because he'll never get a job, mm -hmm. he'll never go to college, he'll never qualify mm -hmm. for almost anything. Not only do you have a felony, it's for pleading guilty to murder. You see, and on a deeper level, right. when we talk about matters of the spirit, we as black mm -hmm. people, spiritually speaking, we have a difficult time accepting responsibility for something we did not do because it goes against our spirit. You know, right. so even though he stays alive, it's almost like he died inside because he did. I took yeah. responsibility for something I didn't do. And then as a result of that, even when I get out of jail, I'm going to suffer mm -hmm. the consequences as if I were guilty. So it's something very difficult to do. And I think that's why a lot of brothers go ahead and try to fight. And I'm going to be honest with you, Queen. I believe, and I got to look more into his case. I have to admit, I haven't Definitely. looked into it enough. But and you've said some things that have me very curious, so I want to go look into it. But I believe his execution was partly motivated by the Just Mercy movie. I believe his execution was partly motivated by the Just Mercy movie, and I'm not laying any blame at the feet of Brian Stevenson. He's innocent. But the point that right. I'm trying to make is that America is so racist. That it Just is. Mercy movie really told the story of innocent black people being on death row. And Brian yeah, and if you see that movie... yeah. And Brian I'm sorry Stevenson, to cut you off, but if you see that movie, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but if you watch okay. that movie, his success, his success in helping to get people accused of capital murder exonerated, his success, right. I believe, angered white America. I think they're angry that he was able to get some of us exonerated and i believe one of the reasons that man was put to death yesterday or the day before it was a way mm -hmm. of white america clapping back at black america to say that even though brian stevenson may have won those cases he's not going to win mm -hmm. this one i really believe that it was an act of revenge to take that man's mm -hmm. life and i do also want to add in the fact that if you watch that jersey um, a Mercy movie, if you realize the um, sheriff remained the sheriff of that city all that time until he retired. Yes. So my thing is, when it boils down to voting, I'm I'm being 100. Our people, they really don't like to vote. And I see why they don't like to vote. Same with the not talking to the police. But to me, the most important thing with voting is to vote for your city. You have to vote for the right governor, the right senate. Because at the end of the day, like what happened to Nathaniel Woods, the um, Supreme Court put it on hold, but the governor came back and said, no, we're going to kill him. And they killed him anyway. So I really feel like 
voting for the president is really not that important. It's the governor, it's the senator, it's the people in your seat, the Senate count, the city councils. It's people like that that we need to vote for and we need to push our community to vote for because this stuff is bogus. And I'm just tired of seeing my black men getting killed. Like, you don't understand this stuff. It hurts me. It kills me. I couldn't even sleep last night. You see my eyes red. I couldn't even sleep. I cried. I yeah. prayed. I was like, please yeah. do not kill this man. But he didn't do anything. Like, I want my people to get the help that they need. And we just need direction. And we need to know what to do when it boils down to the law. Because the law is not for us. It really well, let isn't. me say this. Let me say this. Crazy. I don't take issue with your comments on voting. I don't see a problem with what you're saying, but I do understand right. why our people don't vote. And let us be clear. Not only do mm -hmm. black people not vote, 40% of Americans do not vote. I want you to understand that. 40, okay. That's almost half. That's almost half. Black, white, rich, poor. 40% of Americans do not vote. And the reason they don't is because when you say we have to choose the right person, in most mm -hmm. elections, there is no right person. In other words... That's true. Oh no! I, I just got an Amber you. Alert. They just they just sent an Amber Alert. <laughs> they just okay. sent the Amber Alert. That was an Amber Alert, Queen. Okay. Interruption. But my point is, when you go to the to the to the to the to the uh, clothing store, okay. you got twenty different choices for a blouse. When you go to okay. the restaurant to eat, you got over thirty different entrees that you can select from. The problem that a lot of people have with the so-called democratic process is why is it that when you go to buy a car, there's 20 cars you can choose from. When you go to have mm -hmm. dinner, there's 30 entrees you can choose from. When you go clothes shopping, there's you know an unlimited amount of options for you to choose from. But one of the most important decisions that you make in your life which is who you're going to vote for to represent you in public office, and you're only given two choices, sometimes three. You see how much okay. that doesn't make sense? For everything right, else in life, <laughs> you have multiple choices. You have multiple choices for everything in life, but when it comes to choosing who's going to represent you politically, you only get two choices. And both of those people who you're forced to choose between are funded mm -hmm. by the same people. They're funded by the same people. So even when you're given a choice, you're not really given a choice because no matter who you select, they're going to carry out the same agenda when it comes to black people. See, there might be different agendas on medical care, different agendas mm -hmm. on taxes, different agendas on redistricting the economy. But when it comes to black people, when it comes to mm -hmm. us, Democrat or Republican, yeah. the agenda is the same. You follow what I'm saying? Your voice went out, Queen. Your voice went out. Well, I said I'm trying to follow. Turn your voice up. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes, I mean, I'm trying to follow and everything. It just, you know, I got, I got to make sure everything right for my kids. And I'm going right. to fight for them regardless, no matter what. But, you know, I hear you. I'm taking notes. I take notes on everything you say. And then back to what the guy was saying beforehand when he was speaking on interracial relationships. I'm just mm -hmm. confused on why black men feel the way they feel when it boils down to whether a black woman date a white man i'm just confused on like why do black men come and attack black women for that when at the end of the day the black men some of them are not around some of them not there some of them not present. I agree. a lot I of agree. interracial relationships are mainly black men with white women whenever i go places i see more black men with biracial kids than i do with their own kids so yeah. i'm just confused on why black women are getting attacked 
for a feeling like, okay, well, maybe we need to date outside the race because things are not going our way. Like, we, what do y'all want us to do? Be single? <laughs> a lot of black men is incarcerated for wrongful, like you say, wrongful things, spending 16 years to life for no reason. And there's another, a lot of black men that are married and they have their own family. Then you have some that are passed away. So how many options do a black woman have where they cannot date something else if the rest of the black men is out here, not all, but majority are dating outside of their race, Latinas and white. Well, what I, is a I, black woman I, supposed um, to do? Just be single and die? I reject the double standard. I reject the double standard. I don't think black Maybe. men should have a double standard. And I do think a lot of men do have a double standard where they feel it's okay to date outside the race, but it's not okay for women to do the same. It's wrong for both of y'all to do it. It's wrong for brothers and it's equally wrong for sisters. It just is. Okay. And, you know, to me, the biracializing of black America, the biracializing mm -hmm. of black America is another thinly veiled strategy at extermination. First, we lighten them up, okay, right. to make them think they're acceptable. And then once we lighten them up and make them all think they're acceptable, it'll be easier for us to exterminate. See, when you're my complexion, when you're as beautifully mm -hmm. mocha, brown, caramel, chocolate, beautiful as yourself, we know how white folks feel about us, right? Right. But because I have a, I'm giving, I'm giving real. I have a heart by my skin tone. When I go to interviews, anything like that, the first thing they look at me because I am dark is that oh, she good, she yellow, she did. Instead of giving me a degree, I have a degree, I have education, I know how to speak correctly. I've been in the white world. I know how to move, motivate myself to move. But by my skin tone, it hurts me and it kills me because of my complexion. They already put a stamp on me that she is a killer or she get her, or she gonna come in here and be rude or she gonna be loud and obnoxious. All black women are not obnoxious. All black women are not loud. All black women can speak perfect. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's we right. can speak professionally and we That's can right. I'm just tired of the stigma. And then they always feel like, you know, dark skinned women hate light skinned women. You know what? I've lived my life and guess what? My granddad is whiter than a white. <laughs> my aunt is whiter than a white. And I've never ever had a problem with light-skinned women, never compare complexions, talk junk. And then when I hear it go and body see this happening, I be like, oh my God, this is really what's going on? Like, we really yeah. doing this? But I be shocked. Yeah. Like, it takes I, me yeah, like I've never had a problem. Because I love I've all my people. Problem. I've never had a problem with light skin either. You know, I've, I've never and I thank God because I know some brown skin brothers and sisters who got issues with lighter skin because how they were treated. Right. I know some lighter skin brothers and sisters who got issues with brown skin people for how they were treated. I reject the light skin supremacy. I reject the dark skin supremacy. I reject the brown right. skin supremacy. You know, we all want people. And I'll be honest with you, I had to check myself because up until a couple of years ago, I said that I would only marry a woman who is your complexion. I was really of that opinion because I saw how often our darker skinned sisters were getting overlooked, you understand, and mistreated, you know? So I said, Dr. Umar has to marry chocolate. And it wasn't until I started getting deeper into my spirituality and I had to check myself because I didn't even realize it that I was practicing black skin supremacy, you know? And what right. is my soulmate is supposed to be tan. What if she's supposed to be, you know, uh, butter almond or butter pecan or even light skin? You know what I mean? So I had to check myself because right. I'm like, you can't do that because you're practicing the same thing. You're fighting right. it in reverse. You know. And I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did think of that because the funny thing is, I have a lot of friends that are like complacent and they feel exactly the way I would feel at times. Like when I feel discriminated against that I'm going through my issues with the world, they'll come to me and be like, well, at least, you know, you don't get picked up by your people and you're called this and call it. Like they have issues too. Like we all as black people have issues no matter the skin complexion. 
I just want us to love each other. Because I'm going to love you no matter what. If you're black, I'm just going to love you. Whether you're light, brown, dark, I don't care. I'm going to love you. Right. And That's we right. all have issues, but it all boils back to slavery, period, point blank. And it takes for you to read your history, know what's going on, for you to understand. If you don't know your history, you will never be able to move. You will never be able to walk this earth and just live if you don't know where you come from. And that's what's right, important. Cool. We gotta, you know, we gotta talk to each other. Let each other know, like, I got your back. I love you. Stop with the hate. Stop with the, oh, you too dark or you too white or you pretty because you like not the videos, all that stuff. Like, stop exploiting black women. Let us be queens. And that's the only thing I'm saying. After that, I'm done. That's right. I just want us to be queens. I want us to, you know, I want us to be treated as real women and be respected. Pure point blank, no matter your That's complexion, right. no matter nothing, as a black woman, respect us. And once you respect us, it won't be no old uh, controversy with the white men and the, and the black men. Because at the end of the day, I love all my black men. I don't care what color y'all. Tall, I'll short, see. midget, fat, yeah. black, brown, Indeed. white, I don't care. Indeed. I love you. I will respect Indeed. you. And I'm going to put you on the pedestal and I always say to you, my king, pure point blank. That's but, right. oh, Dr. Omar. I don't want to hold you up in the morning. I know your fans going to start getting on me in a little bit. <laughs> it's okay, love. But yeah, I want to see wanna you in Greensboro. I, I love y'all. I want to see you in Greensboro. And I owe Greensboro. And what's the date again? Because I need to come see you. Because I, I live in Charlotte. And you're supposed to come to Charlotte the 28th, right? It, it's, it switched. It's Greensboro now, Queen. It moved from Charlotte oh, to Greensboro. Oh, instead of Charlotte. Yeah, instead of Charlotte. Oh. March the 28th. Same date, different city. Greensboro, March, March the 28th. 28th. Yes, yes. At the Nkrumah Center. You can get the info on my website, Dr. Umar Johnson. Okay, I'm going to your website now, check it out. Yeah, we need to go ahead and um Yeah, I'll go ahead and make that little that hour and a half drive for you. Make Dr. it, baby. <laughs> make it, baby. Make it. Come come give me a big hug. I will. And, and, All right, take me, care. I love a everybody. Pie or sweet potato pie too. Bring me bring uh, me a uh, pumpkin uh, pie. Home cook with your well, I might hands. do that little pat on the bell. Well, I might Look hit that pat on the bell wall part, but I got you. <laughs> All right, love. Appreciate you. All right. All have right a good now. night. Bye. Take care. She was beautiful. I love that brown skin. That dark brown mixed with the chocolate. Los Angeles, Long Beach, I am here. The Prince is in California. I'm hungry. I'm about to order me something to eat. And then I'm going to bed. I got a long day tomorrow. It was a long flight. I'm going to peace out on y'all.